coming up on this New Year's edition of Tech Espresso. I'm going to talk about the top five and a half technology fails of 2011. And I'm going to take a quick sip of uh, tea that I picked up from Tivana. And Chris is going to go over his top five internets with Let's an S. Oh, Let's do it. Hello, Sean here, bringing you the top five and a half technology fails of 2011, brought to you by the FailCat. Starting off the list at number five and a half is the iPhone 4S. Don't get me wrong, the iPhone 4S is a great phone with its dual-core Apple A5 processor and its outstanding 8 megapixel camera, but it falls short on one pivotal point. It is not the iPhone 5. After all the rumors of 4G capability and a new sleek and slim design, the iPhone 4S just doesn't live up to the hype. It's the phone the world deserves, but not the one it needs right now. Number 5 on the list is anything released by RIM. RIM really did a valiant effort this year with their releases, except for the recent pushback of new BlackBerry devices until late 2012, but unfortunately it's too little, too late. RIM is consistently losing its market share of business types who believe that email is routed to them through a series of tubes in favor of Android and iOS devices. And at this point, I don't think there's anything that can save them. Number four, Google Plus. It's a sad truth. Google is terrible at releasing social platforms. Google Plus was closed from the public for far too long, and by the time it was opened up, Facebook was able to replicate many of its sought-after features, and no one wanted it. Google Plus activity is continually dwindling. There hasn't been much buzz about it lately, so I wouldn't doubt that we'll soon be waving goodbye to it. <laughs> Marcel's gonna look at some tea. Taking a break from Sean's list. My name is Marcel, and contrary to proper belief, I'm not the show. But anyways, we're gonna take a quick sip of a new tea today. It's out of Tivanis, Tea Lover's Collection that the Tea Fairy brought me over the holidays. Today we're just gonna talk about one of the teas, and it is Tranquil Dream. It, in, in parentheses here, it says night tonight, so it's the perfect tea when you come home from a long day and you just wanna put your feet up on the coffee table and chill. It consists of chamomile, nana mint, um, orange blossoms, among other various cool sounding ingredients. So let's um, put it in one of these cool canisters that I got with the collection and go from there. It comes with four canisters to preserve the freshness of the tea. I'll take a nice uh, sniffy sniff. Mmm, it smells excellent. Thanks, Marcel. And now on with the list. Coming in number three is the Netflix Quickster fiasco. When Netflix decided to change its pricing for its DVD and instant streaming plans earlier in this year, there was a lot of outrage from their customers. But then to follow it up with a decision to attempt to split the DVD service into another company with a very Web 1.0 sounding name, come on Netflix. Number two is the PlayStation Network. 2011 for PlayStation owners will forever be known as the year of outages and outrage. It's not so much that the network was able to be hacked and taken down, but the way Sony went about handling the situation by trying to cover it up, abusing its customers, and forcing them to sign legal documentation, barring them from suing them to play their favorite games. And the number one tech fail of 2011? WebOS and the HP Touchpad. WebOS to me was like the little engine that could. Somehow it kept steaming on despite a lack of developers compared to other platforms. I genuinely loved the way the OS worked and almost bought a Palm Pre for myself when I was still with Sprint. But when HP bought Palm, I knew in the back of my head that the end was nigh. HP abandoned a great OS and great hardware much too soon. Kind of like a certain colorful haired host on a certain peacock shaped TV network. Thankfully, with HP open sourcing WebOS and a hacking community getting Android up and running on the touchpad, there may still be a future for both. Now Marcel's gonna make some of that delicious tea. The tea was smelling. Alright, so now that we have our cast iron teapot and our water, that is approximately recommended by Tivana to be at 208 degrees Fahrenheit. And we should be steaming it for approximately five to six minutes. Hey, I'm Chris, and I'm going to talk about the top five internets of the internet of the internet of 2011's internet. Number five, Rebecca Black. It's Prove to us that it only takes a retarded teenager talking about what seat she wants to sit in and eating cereal to become famous. It was an internet sensation at the beginning of the year, and she is still sort of kind of famous, not really at all. 
Number four, Skyrim, one of the greatest games of all time, has us fighting dragons and all kinds of crazy shit. Anyways, it spawned the most terrible, most awful, annoying internet meme of all time, referring to an arrow to the knee and used to be an Avenger or something. So we now see people on Facebook referring to arrows in their knee and they have no idea what they're talking about, but they still think they're fucking hilarious. Number three, Mr. Chuck Tester, the proprietor of the Ohio Valley Taxidermy Company, was showing off his badass taxidermying skills by making his dead animals that he brought to life seem alive, and then popping in and saying, Nope, Chuck Testa. For some reason, it was an internet sensation for like three weeks on Reddit. It was crazy. Everybody was like, Nope, Chuck Testa. Marcel is going to take a taste of that delicious tea that he was brewing. All right, that tea is just about done steeping, and we're going to try to enjoy this tranquil dream. Oh, hello, Sean. Hey. Mm, looks good. Are you ready for this? I don't think I am. Be prepared. All right, let's give it a little sniff first. Okay, okay. Chamomile is coming yeah. through. Definitely smell the orange, too. Mm. This is really good. It is. I can see how this would be great. After a long day, you just want to come home and relax, read a book, and get ready for bed. Cool beans. Thank you. And now back to Chris with his top five internets. Thanks, Marcel. Now, number two, Time Magazine's Person of the Year, the protester, made waves across the internet by using social media sites and file sharing services to spread the word, organize, and show the world the atrocities of the authorities in various countries from the Middle East to Oakland. And the moment you've all been waiting for, the number one internet of 2011's Internet of Internets, the Nan Cat. The catchiest rainbow shitting Pop-Tart cat, cat you've ever seen. Just received its first official product in an Xbox Live version of the Neon Cat game. Yes. This is complete. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this New Year's edition of Techspresso. Yeah, we stamped some tea, gave you some top things of the year. Speaking of uh, Chris's top five list... The developer of the Nyan Cat game also has an awesome game called Techno Kitten Adventure! It features kittens and rainbows and narwhals and unicorns and bacon and kittens and rainbows! And we are giving away one free copy of the Xbox Live version to a random viewer of this episode. To qualify for the drawing, all you need to do is tweet with the hashtag TechSpressoFree, TKA, and include your Xbox Live username. And as always, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash techspresso or on Twitter at, at techspresso. Don't forget our website, techspresso.net. Yes. Until next time. Till next year, Nyan Cats and Chris is drunk. <laughs> Are you actually going to record? Because I, I haven't even practiced yet. 2005 was a crazy year on the internet. And I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Cut! Do it again. I really think we're gonna get it this time.